Mm. Mm. Alright, hello everybody. We're doing some Hearthstone again today. As you might expect, with, with the uh, release of a new set, I always have the itch in me to do a good number of arenas. And uh, the Boomsday Project is no exception to this. So we're going to jump on in, see if we can find out some more, have some more fun with some more mechs. We did, uh, what, Hunter and Warlock last time we did this on Wednesday? So we'll, we'll see if we can do some more different classes, see how they fare out. So let's just jump on in. Oh, thank you very much for the sub, Squirrel Token. That's a good start. Oh my goodness, it's been just... It's 13 minutes. Alright, so yeah, Hunter and Warlock were who we had before. So, Warlock's off the table. Warrior and Mage, huh? Well... I know Warrior's got some some power of rush going down, and I know Mage is, is just the mage. Um The thing I'm most interested in with Mage is that like they have some interesting powerful spell damage tools in the set. Maybe Bruce is going good, going good. But I think I'm going to go with Warrior just out of a, a sense that Mage is the one I go with more likely, more often. And I want to try something different. Maybe we can get some, some... There's also some strong mech stuff in Warrior from memory, so... Stronger than I. Let's run it down. <clears throat> than I. Okay, starting between Grizzly, Hydra, Bone Drake. Bone Drake is, you know, a, a known thing. Bitter Tide Hydra sounds like a mistake in Warrior. One of your most powerful effects is the fact that you have a pile of, uh... You, you've got infinite whirlwinds, you know, and that's, that's like a way to lose a lot when you have infinite whirlwinds. Which would grizzly is always a strong thing, but I always like having one bone drake as my top end. Because it's like a, a big top end thingy that also becomes a bigger top end thingy. Yeah, cards are happening. So, as strong as Witchwood Grizzly is, and it is strong, trust me. Uh, we're going to go with the bone drake so we have a bone drake at the ready. Oh, look at this golden pile of cards. Wow, some base set stuff. All sorts of base set stuff. Um... Gosh, do you remember Shattered Sun Cleric at 3-3? I do. Oh, I'm gonna put Shieldmaster here. Here. Generally, we can get some good taunt going within Warrior, and this is a good protector for your twos and threes. Speaking of pr good protector for those sorts of things, Direhorn Hatchling has a similar sort of thing going on. Uh, in that it's a, a decent, it's a, a Fen Creeper early, and then late game gets you the upgraded bog. So, I think I'm gonna go... I like Firefly a lot as well, but I think we're just gonna keep going with big big zone. Ooh, okay. Mind Control Tech is a card that's just always a beating, but Warpath here, and Yeti, and just Yeti, but Warpath is a, is a scalable removal spell. Or scalable Wrath, even. Which makes it really strong. Uh, that, that's its main thing, is, is that the... the the, the scalability of Warpath makes it really, really good. Well, MCT is always on as well. The thing is that nobody plays around MCT, and it's still a 3-mana 3-3 regardless. Warpath is going to be useful, though. I, I believe in Warpath. Uh, Rotten Applebaum, Tuscar Fisherman. I'm going to pick Fisherman here, just based on getting me some 2-drops. Spell damage also does have relevance early already with Warpath. Um, Direhorn, Orny Direhorn is fine. Um... Apple Bomb's okay, but not necessary in this class. It's a lot better when you don't have healing or you have some sort of interactions with it. We just already have that. Rocket Boots, Immune, Direwolf. I would like to pick the Rocket Boots here, but Death Speaker is such a beating. Direwolf Elf is also really good, but Death Speaker on your two to trade with their two is really, really good. And it's a 2 4 to boot as well, making it sort of like a neutral uh, Divine Shieldsman. The. Oh, okay. Uh, 
I love Kokron Elite, but this is an Arcanite Reaper. And Execute, too. That's, that's some strong picks right there. Weapons Project, huh? Alright, so Weapons Project. Each player equips a 2-3 weapon and gains 6 armor. Um... Festering Root Hulk is uh, two attacks from a friendly minion to make it big enough to, to, to be on cost, 4-7, and then once it's above 4-7, everything's free. Muck Hunter could be really good in this um, because Muck Hunter is a lot better of a card when you have things like Warpath available. Hey, Copper Popper. So, and we're still early enough that I feel fine picking up the Muck Hunter. The thing is that Muck Hunter does a a really fun, uh, a really good uh, uh, impression of Doomguard. And Doomguard is ridiculously good. So, two weapons. I'm going to pick Cruel Taskmaster. Again, I like uh, the cheapness of this card. Fester Hulk is something I want to try, too. Forge of Souls, not really. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Okay, this is a strong choice. Arcane Dynamo. What does Arcane Dynamo have within Warrior? I, I think this just says Discover a Brawl. But I also think... You know what? That's a... <laughs> hey, Shabadoo. Hope you're having a great trip. I just want to check here quick. What are, what, are, what are our list of spells at that? Brawl is five, I thought. Yeah, it says five or more. Which makes it legal. Lesser Mithril Spellstone. The Boom Ship. Gather Your Party. Unidentified Shield. Deadly Arsenal. With the Graveyard Art. Sudden Genesis Brawl. Discover is always within class. D Discover is class and neutral. And there aren't neutral spells, so with this one it's just class. Unless a card specifically says from a class, like... Like like the the um, the the jade agents or the the cabal courier that say discover a mage priest or warlock card it will be from your class. The card has to say it's an exception to be an exception. Okay. Anyway, militia commander is a really really strong cleanup crew. Frothing berserker is a threat. Um. Let's get the threat going. Well, this is not the greatest looking pile of cards. Uh, I'm gonna pick Z <sighs> Sabertooth Stalker as just like a secret eight points of burn. Sure, why not? Hey, Bloodsail Raider, I'll pick you up. Electro this has strong with us having a Reaper. Okay, now we're seeing mechs for the first time. We've seen... I think I'm still going to pick Red Band Wasp here. This thing gets really, really nice uh, at dealing with small things, and these don't really make me feel like I want to be doing mech stuff. Skater Bot's fine, but... Uh, another Warpath, huh? Sure. That actually seems like it fits well with what we have going on here. Guild Recruiter, how good are you? Not very in our deck. I'm going to take a two-drop. Woodsman's Axe, huh? Ooh, and an Execute. Give a ran a Rush Minion. We do have some Rush Minions. I'm gonna believe in, in cheap weapons. Ooh, and this is just a pile of cards that all make things. I think going cheapest is gonna be my biggest boon here. And then on the opposite side of this, we should probably go big. Um, another Muck Hunter, a Sunwalker, a Replicating Menace, which is a really hard-to-remove body. Um, still liking that Muck Hunter. I think I'm gonna go with that, even with the Sunwalker right there. Alright, Stubborn Gastropod. I think we're good on twos, finally, I say, looking at my 15th two. Ooh, Giant Wasp! I love Giant Wasp! It's very good removal. Uh, Rusty Recycler. Uh, I think this thing's fine on its own. I know there's a Gurabashi. Ooh! There's a Garabashi here, as the other thing, I suppose. Now let's 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 get rusty. 
Another woodcutter's axe. Let's give myself a firefly, though. That'll give me, so me something on one. Yo! Alright. Go big. Uh, Tar Lord, another two. I think we're going to make a Tar Lord here. Another warp. Okay, we are on the warpath. And I'll pick up a Mecharu as well. Let's get tiny. When your weapon is destroyed, plus one, plus one. We have enough tiny things. I'm okay picking up a Shamor. We need something on four. Final pick. Whenever a card is shuffled into your deck, an extra copy of that card. Okay, that doesn't do anything without, like, four specific cards in the game of Hearthstone. Gordor Creeper. Uh, still strong? And Twilight Drake fills out my fours, which is something I'm thinking. Did Bilmer go to 8-mana when I wasn't paying attention? That was a change. About the same time Gordor Creeper went to a 2-5, so, like, gosh, six-ish months ago? Maybe not that long. But yeah, I know the feeling. I've had the same thing happen in Eternal where I like opened up uh where I like saw my opponent play a two drop and I'm like, hold on, wasn't that a three cost card? And the answer is yes, yes it was. Alright, Bone Mare still is garbage to play against. Uh that hasn't changed, V Priz. The card being eight really doesn't change it. <laughs> it's still dumb. Uh anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and Put up our decks. We're gonna go ahead and get going. You can place your bets. How do you think this one's gonna go? I'm a bit like the curve makes me feel happy about this, uh, and some of our power cards make me feel happy about this. I think the triple warpath is maybe the thing that has me most interested in, in everything we have going on here. Um, but we'll have to see how that plays out. We do have. A secret way of, of pumping spell damage but it involves controlling two minions so it's unlikely to be something we're gonna be doing while we warpath unless it's already on the board and we need to sweep the thing with warpath that I think is gonna be really scary with this deck is that this deck contains a frothing berserker and warpath with frothing berserker is a real easy way to get in for like 15 points of freaking damage But yeah, go ahead and place your bets. Alright, we got the deck list built. Let's go ahead and save it and pull it on up. Oh, thank you for the bits, Jazz Arms. Alright, and let's get this centered. Okay. Find it funny how this deck only has two new cards, yeah. And, like, we have, like, Rusty Recycler and, what, like, Mecharu? That's it? Very little new that showed up for us in Warrior Arena. That doesn't bode too well for us. We're not going to be able to be doing some crazy stuff like our opponents will be. But we'll see. One thing that you have to keep in mind with this new set is that you actually have to be quite fearful of, uh your opponent playing mechs and yeah. and do a good amount of clearing around them Watch your back. Pumandu, and we want to full mole this I could keep the giant wasp yeah, that's the end of that thought we could keep the giant wasp did you even see any magnetic we did see one skater bot as like the only magnetic card I can remember Okay, we got a lot of good removal th tools in this early. Star Lord, huh? Hey, how you doing? But the Skater Bot was also one of like four mechs we saw. We also saw the Sticky Mech. The one that's like, uh, when it dies, make 3 one, one mechs. That was the only other mechanical thing I can recall. Alright, so I think Gastropod looks good here. We got a lot of removal, so that's nice. Now it's all about having threat. That knife doesn't do enough against our poison. If they have to take a whole, like, two rounds to kill it, I'd be okay with that if they skip their three. If they just play a three and it dies to my two, I'd be okay with that. Sure. That's not bad. We still trade up into that. 
Uh, there's our spell damage secret. Let's, uh, let's do some clearing. We even get to like hide our spell damage, which is pretty nifty. Got the war path going if our opponent goes wide. Uh, next turn, we probably get to armor up. If our opponent plays anything that's like one singular big thing, we've got the... Hmm. Smelly fish. Yummy fish. Hmm. All right. Let's see how bad the legend is for us. Lorewalker Cho. Come on, Millhouse Mana Storm it. Oh, God, you millhouse, and I just get the warpath for infinity. That'd be funny. That'd actually be really funny if millhouse showed up. Okay, knife wiggling. Tar creeping. Fine. Um... Okay, I don't think this is going to be too effective for us, but we're going to try this anyway in this w in this way. We have the warpath for clearing this if our opponent can... The knife juggler tells me our opponent wants to go wide a little bit here. Okay. Nice knife. Their other knife gets rid of the other half of that. I think we just take the warpath. The alternate to the warpath is Coin Tar Lord, and I don't know how much I care about that. Oh, we got a lot of echo going on here. Let's 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 go on the warpath. Get that knife juggler off the board. We got our friend the walnut here. Now, do they have magnetic stuff for this? That would be the 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 uh, the beating if they did. I want to play the Tar Lord or Warpath clear plus a little bit of extra on this turn. Yep, that's the danger. That's what happens when a mech sticks around in this format is... <laughs> oh, that's good. Alright, let's play the Tar Lord, pass it up. Truth is found in death. But yeah, this is this is the the war gear and things like that are what make mechs so incredibly dangerous because plus one on blessing of kings is such such a scary thing for every class to have, and like not only can every class have it, but every class can have it like to high effect. So our next turn, however, gets to be really nice. We get to muck hunter plus a warpath, and we can even double warpath if the need arises. To like kill off Keliseth or maybe something with two. Uh, the hope is that they run in there, they're 9 6 into the 5 11 here, it becomes a 9 1, and then we warpath to kill it off. So we get to do some clean hitting out of the house. And leaving ourselves with a muck hunter that's probably gonna be about 4, I mean, 5 3, 5 2, something. A body. And we have the walnut. To, mm, we have the walnut as a, a board refill, I suppose, as well. Oh, yeah, those are, I guess, an option that our opponent could have, too, would be, uh, like, literally just having that. Hmm. Well, that sucks on ice. Uh, what do we want to do about Bone Mare? I'm glad they didn't just, like, go heavy in on, like, this thing or something like that. Uh, we don't want to attack because we don't want to spend that health. I think maybe it's just playing the dire horn. Three walnuts seems like a poor way to go about it. Because I'm going to be warpathing a lot next turn. I'm gonna put down a little bit more defense and try to make the warpath stronger on the follow-up. 
we should, like, what should happen here is we should get the Bone Mare plus Keliseth uh, on the 511, and then the 9 6 takes out the 3 6. Um, alternately, you can, you can swap those around a little bit. If they have extra damage, they might move things around. But the point is that that should do a pretty deep. They'll be left with 15 power, but that 15 power will have 1 and 3 toughness respectively. Okay, Betrayal doesn't make things too bad. That's only three points. Okay, that sucks on ice. Uh, I'm not even going to get be able to get Keliseth off the board here. That Keliseth is going to have... Uh... <laughs> okay. Um... Uh, so they got through that turn without putting a point of damage on any of their minions, huh? None of them? None of them. What now? Like, is there a Muck Hunter line? I can't get through Keliseth. There would be a Muck Hunter line if I could hit that 9-6, but I can't even get through Keliseth. Um What now? I can spin, but that leaves with a 9-1 and yeah, okay. All right. So it turns out our deck has very little to be able to touch just high toughness things. Yeah, that was that was all neutrals. But yeah, the, 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 everybody can go very big in, uh, in this format is, is kind of a truth of it. The war mech, uh, I forget the name of it. I just call it war mech. Uh, the, the five, five. Gerash versus Arthas. All right. Yeah, I just call it war mech, whatever. Uh, let's get this out of here, and let's keep... I kind of like keeping this around. Alright, I think... I think we want to hold back. We want to play things on two and maybe coin into that Twilight Drake. Okay, okay, that's, that's actually going to be pretty good against this specific line here. So, let's get out. We'll just go ahead and play Bloodsail Raider. Okay, I am very happy with our opponent just doing that. If they just want to do that and I get the sweep... I think I will just take the sweep on that. Like, a warpath that direct- Oh, I don't even need to warpath now, do I? Like... I'm going to anyway. Bonus on four. We've got like a Shield Master play, or a Twilight Drake play, or if we need to Cruel Taskmaster, I've got that up my sleeve. Come dance to my song. Interesting. Sure, I think this is a good time for getting this Twilight Drake down. It's a four seven. I don't like. I don't like how it leaves my opponent with a four, with a three three untouched, but I'm okay with that. I'll hold the coin here as well. Like, Blessing of Kings, we answer pretty cleanly. So I don't feel too bad about running into that. Like, if they Blessing of Kings attack my my Drake, we just Cruel Taskmaster plus run in. And if they leave it at 3-1, that's even... That's just as fine. Alright, looks like this is another Warpath turn. <laughs> and this is where our sweepers do us a lot of good. I'm even going to coin another this flame sprit. 
cool that cleared their board out we get these one twos out which answer their hero power we've got a lot of power on the board i've got a lot of decently sized things in hand should be able to reasonably answer threats that come our way my only problem is that our opponent has seven of those in hand so we need to continue to make like reasonable trades on our end uh like any more things that end up two for wanting us like uh we've we've had to in the past are not going to be flying so well because our opponent has done some card draw with that three three okay so that gets them a little bit of acceleration oh okay so that's a two for one in our favor but it gets them okay mind if i roll need i guess here we just get to go ahead and play out like cruel taskmaster and grave shambler yeah that seems fine Okay, so this is the like fake shredder. The thing is that it puts it from your hand into play, and then of course the skater bot. I'm actually really happy about that turn of events. Um, our board's okay against arcane missiles. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. They get a decent cleanup, but we get our own pretty good cleanup back. Um, I'm probably gonna use that death speaker to keep myself uh, rolling in. Ooh, is that something I can make effective use of? I probably want to hold that, actually. Yeah, let's try holding that for a little bit. So, we want to death speak here. And then cross attacks, put up a shield, Nasta. This is a good answer to something like a Vine Cleaver coming down. Makes Vine Cleaver unable to really do anything effectively. We have Muck Hunter for dealing with a big minion. Oh, that means they have Bone Mare in their hand, right? I think I've played against this before. Um, Alright. So far, what I've learned about how the, the, the current uh, arena works is that the moment somebody plays this specific card, Violet Worm, their next card is usually a Bone Mare. Um, it does not look like that's the situation here, which is good to hear. Uh, you know, we've got uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on the board, so that's lethal. We've got Muck Hunter to run through any sort of big thing that comes in our path. Oh my god, it's the cube! <laughs> cube. And that's, that's lethal. Round him down. So, when, when, when uh, Abyss Hunter and I were, were doing, going through our, our uh, set review, we talked about, we made a lot of, like, Malagos comments about how a lot of the like cheaty cards in the set would obviously work with Malagos because that's sort of our go-to cheaty card. But the real cheaty card, and we we did mention this quite a lot throughout it. Oh, our opponent's Guru as well. I did, didn't notice that. That's pretty cool. That, that, that could be a Netrunner reference. Um, is that uh, Cube is actually the real winner. Uh, Malagos is a 9 mana 412 with spell damage plus 5. Uh, a lot of the cards in the set allow you to cheat minions into play at cheaper costs. Uh, which allows you to have more than 1 mana remaining when you have your five, plus 5 spell damage. So you can go for some sort of lethal shenanigans. Uh, but Cube is really the other... The, the real card that is the all-star everything works with Cube. Everything is an upgrade with Cube sort of thing. So... There's a lot of, like, Death Rattle Trigger cards in this set, uh, in Rogue, and those are really strong with the cube. The Z-Reaper. Okay. Uh, I like that Shrieking Shroom, but we need something to go with it, so I'm gonna get rid of our fives and keep the Shroom. Okay, Warpath is not the thing I wanted with the Shroom, but... That's fine. I think that was the D Reaper. Greetings. Oh, coin two? How strong? Is it like taunt? Okay, not something I want to warpath. Okay. 
We're gonna be we're having a real weak start here. Ooh, this is gonna Hey, there's that thing I was thinking of. Hmm, this is kinda bad. Uh, well, that's not very useful at all, is it? So that thing's gonna make that a four, a five, two. I needed my opponent to like. Okay, you know what? That's sort of what I needed. I needed my opponent to make a play there that died to a doubled warpath, and that's sort of the play that does. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of these. Okay. So that gets things done, question mark? Our current problem is getting the board back under control. I uh, wonder if they've got more things that... Okay, okay. We can just go ahead and play out like our Grave Shambler, something like that, and maybe... Oh, actually, that's a lot better than Grave Shambler. That's a 4-6. That should get things done on the board. We get to play Sabretooth Stalker behind it, and then... Tar Lord to start cleaning up the world. So things are looking up from this point. Our opponent had a pretty good start that we didn't have the ability to match. So that means right now our, the actual problem is our opponent's ability to, to tap sort of uncontested. Uh, we have like very little in the ways of being able to do much about that. We have a lot of muck hunters hanging out. Uh, let's go ahead and trade off and play out our Sabertooth Stalker. Uh, they should be trading their their tiger with our big with our you know big in here, and we get tar lord, which is sort of our stop. Tar lord's gonna be our halt. You know, violated the law card here. We have muck hunters as well. If I really need to kill something off dead, or if I just need to spend this eight on something, I'd rather not. I'd rather attack with this eight on, at face and then just go uh, rush in like play down tar lord would be my hope. Like, they play a six here that's, like, pretty dangerous, but I just get to go face anyway is the hope. But if, if it is a six I want to trade with, like, if a Boulder Fist Ogre were to come down, I would just take the trade. I would not mess around there. Uh, there's no reason to, to take that risk if they were clear. Now, if it's stuff like this where it's just, like, a pile of tiny things, you, you bet I am going face. Okay, well... On the plus side, that is something I just need off the dang board. Like, I don't want to allow a, a opponent who is a Warlock lifesteal at a regular rate. So getting rid of that is well worth it, in my opinion. However, uh, does mean we're, we're a little bit uh, stuffed as far as board presence. As long as we can keep this hanging out. Okay, we have a reasonable hand size for this, but they get to hide behind. Yeah, they get to hide behind and uh, start setting up that. That's okay. This is going to be fine. I think we actually get to play, like, Frothing Berserker, um, and maybe Muck Hunter? I'm not certain on that. Ooh, okay. I think Giant Wasp, Frothing, Armor Up are gonna, is going to be my line here. So, we can get really dangerous here. Uh, a Defile for my opponent would do a near full clear here. But the poison's what I'm counting on right now. Okay, there's the defile. So the defile is two for two, uh, which means it's not that bad. And it's gonna bring this grizzly down to to uh, down to low toughness. Also, like twenty-one. I wonder what their follow-up to Defile is. Oh, heal it up. Sure, that makes sense. Again, the fact that they're being able to hide behind these taunts that I can't really do a lot about is a absolute killer for, for what we have available. Uh, I don't want to pay the three on this. Okay. We need our Muck Hunter. Yeah, again, our opponent's very heavy on card advantage on us, and we haven't been able to pressure them. We do have the board under reasonable control here. I think we can keep it that way. Um, 
depends on how powerful their plays to follow are. I'd really like to draw into a warpath, I think would be one of my one of my two remaining ones. Would be a good draw here. Oh, Mortal Coil. Nice. Okay, they can't take out the 5-8 with known cards. Opponents plus six on us. That should be a pretty obvious attack in my mind with that 4-4, four, four, unless something is different and they actually have a way to kill the 5-8 in hand. That would change things up. Okay, that's... That's the sort of board presence I really don't have a... Uh, that I guess, you know, just as powerful coming back. They have a Shadow Flame? They have a Shadow Flame, too. Ugh. So I lose everything on that. Well, hmm... Okay. That looks really nice. So we get the Muck Hunter, we get the Warpath. We take that out and we get to put down a Poison Taunt to hide this behind. Okay, that actually works out well. Problem here is 6 in hand plus tap. Like, they have a lot of advantage left, and we don't have much. Is that another Mortal Coil? Oh, dear. Uh... Oh, dear. Um, this is... Not a great position for us at this posi at this point. Again, being able to, to pressure a warlock means that late game they run away with card advantage, and this is sort of the side of the the uh, the the end of that of those days here. They said well played because they believe there's no card that we could draw that would win us the game, which, like, I feel fairly confident that they're correct in that assessment. Like, I do not believe there's any one card we could top deck in the game of Hearthstone that would change the, the situation we are in. And they've got five additional cards on us, and they, they probably are pretty reasonable, too. Okay. Hey, Spring Rocket. Alright. I don't think Deathwing would do it. Like, our opponent was, like, six cards in hand. I assume, like, you know, Deathwing with Sardanite Chain Gang in their hand, we're not getting through that. So, I, I, I do not believe... I, I stand by my previous sentence. I do not believe that there is a card in the game of Hearthstone we could have top decked that would have changed the outcome of the game. Which is why our opponent gave us the well-played at that point. Like, you know, they have five known cards in their hand. If they're still willing to tap on 14 life, they feel pretty safe. Oh, they don't need to do anything. Alright. Anywho. Defeated by the Z Reaper. So let's see if we can go ahead and get ourselves running through the 1-2 uh, Swiss Gambit lines. Thoroughly unimpressed with the deck, though. I'm a little... If I'm sad about anything, it's that we just don't get to show off anything new. Uh, there's... there's That's just... There were a couple cards... Oh, cheese! Maybe our opponent will be able to show us something new. That'd be nice. Maybe our opponent has some nice things for us. Okay, that seems fine. Could have kept the axe. Okay, this actually looks really nice. We get Mecharoo, we get Shrieking Shroom that can hide behind some, uh... How many get made boom cards? Is bumming out? Do they have... Does boom not have the, like, plus, uh, like, status? Uh, I... Uh, better way to... S that sentence... Does, does, um, does, usually when a new set comes out, there's like a plus 50% sh uh, appearance rate. Did they just stop doing that? Oh. 
like I've, I think I've mentioned before. I, I at this point I can't keep straight everything they do in the arena because they they there are so many rules and changes to it. Oh, this is nice. So yeah, I want the shroom out, and I want to be able to hide the shroom behind Gastropod, and then we get to protect the shroom. And protected shroom is really nice. Sure, it's fine. Um. Yep, sure, are getting some 1-1s one out of there. Do they have a warpath? Uh, hmm. I wonder. <laughs> Fine, you jerk. These are all expendable. I will expend them. Yo! Oh, hello! <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> They had to spend an Arcanite freaking Reaper on a fake one drop. Oh my god. Whew. Uh. Hey, Chameleons. <laughs> Sure. Okay. Goodbye, my friend. All right. Let's uh, let's do some cleanup. There's a price on your head. Yo, that mushroom did so much for us. Okay, we can probably just sidestep that. We have a warpath to deal with the one ones that come out. Uh, let's get. Don't let that stick. We we have like again like if they bump into my dragon and I just get to like warpath things off or whatever, and I get the dragon. Our opponent has a has some some board issues. I don't want to hand over my board. Real big day for death for that card, isn't it? Oh, hi. Uh, hmm. Well, if you want to proclaim gotcha on me, you can. That's That's fair. I think that's the attack I want. It's funky, it looks weird, but I think that's the attack I want. Okay. Okay, Mastodon gets to do some good work here. Wish I had the coin still. <laughs> what now? Hmm. 
Do you have any good Malgos targets other than Warpath? Mm, looking on that right hand side, doesn't look like it. Is this a Bone Mare turn? This be a good Bone Mare turn. For the War Chief. Ooh, the War Chief. You have extra damage. Yeah, okay, you do. Alright, so this is going to look a little funky, but we have to take a little bit of damage here uh, to make things function. If we want a clear board, I need to deal extra damage to that. Now, Rusty Recycler is going to be, hopefully, our hero holding this together for us. I need our opponent to have, like, sort of minor-sized plays, threes and fours, rather than eights and nines. Because, like, another... That's the sort of play I didn't need. Hmm. Bit troubling, that one. Okay, so we hopefully we'll gain four off of these attacks. Two cards left in our opponent's hand. They can't have two terribly. Never mind. That's still a card in the game of Hearthstone. All right. Um, unless my top deck is quite literally Warpath, we are out right now. Is that enough to keep me alive? That is, weirdly enough, I think that's that's enough to keep me standing. Yeah, there's no attack that makes sense. See, so yeah, we'll go to two attacks, and unless they have unless they have a way to break that, they could bring me to four. They still can only bring me to four, or to two with that, or to one, like, yeah, because the weapon charge, so they attack me and bring me to one, and now I need... Yeah, like, they can break, they can use their weapon plus face to break Shield Masta. Like, I can trade here, I could try to play the Muck Hunter, but that's not, that's going to put too much power on my opponent's board. I think we're just out again. Uh, the fate of the warrior, I suppose. I foolish of me not to play Malgos to end this out, though. Oh, Bone Mare is a killer card still. Alright. Outside of Joey Bot, I don't think I got to show off of a, a and the, the, the Tauntry, though. I didn't get to show off anything from the new set. So I think we're going to see if we can find something other than Warrior to give ourselves a fun time with. That should be fine. Let's get our 20 gold. Eh, yeah, 30 dust. Alright. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and just uh, roll right back in and see if we can get a different one. Priest or mage, huh? We've been dancing around mage a couple times now. Let's take oh I should take the, the, the deck down, seeing as that's no longer the deck. 
Um, basically the advantage bar spins to whoever sticks a bone mare. Sticking a bone mare is like a 90% victory play. It's, 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 it's been the strongest arena common for its entirety of its lifespan. And it will be until it rotates. Um, Priest, huh? Priest has, like, new set stuff, not... is like, a lot of, like, weird combo shenanigans and, like, some Death Rattle stuff from memory. Uh... No, we were dancing around Mage. Let's go ahead and see if... see how Mage works. I know they lowered spell count. Oh, hold on. Alright. Unexpected results. Summon two random two-cost minions, improved by spell damage. Uh, the number that is a, a numeral is the one that is improved, not the number that is uh, a, a, a word. So it ups the, the cost of the minions that get generated, which I think is a fun enough card to try out. Let's do it. Mecharoo, Dragon Slayer, Lone Champion. Uh, I've all I've got a good spot in my heart for Mecharoo, but Lone Champion's also real strong. All three of these are good. Um, why are there two different rarities here? There was a change to the arena quite a while back where rather than going by rarity, they go by card quality. So you generally have three cards of uh, similar card quality. Rather than like a rare uh, three awful perp, three awful purples, you know. There's still some balance put into rarity. There's a gigantically long Excel document article thing that I've just never read about it because I don't have six hours. But you know what? I'll accept Emerald Reaver. We get some early stuff. Ooh, here we go. This, this it could be anything. Could even be a fireball. Hey, okay. Arcane Keysmith is a really great four drop because it's like more copies of uh just going to assume quality will be wonky. It 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 can't not be. But it's way better than it was. Uh like it, it's it's like like it's not really like I don't even know if wonky is a word I would use to describe it. It generally gives you three cards of equal quality. And you have to pick based on like what you're looking for as far as like uh, curve, removal, things like that. Sure, like, you can't, like, Bone Mare versus anything generally means the Bone Mare is gonna win with some, some, with few exceptions, but, you know, versus, like, the Sweepers, but that's more of a, hmm, draw the lowest cost mini in your deck, which would be Emerald Reaver, Mecha Roo, Swift Messenger, Keep picking up spells. Ooh, I like Kaboombot a lot. It's good removal. Oh, Valid Worm has been this huge buster everybody else has had on their side, but I kind of want to have knives on my end. I don't have a lot of ways to make super use of Knife Juggler, though. Let's get big. Ooh, I love Shimmering Tempest. Random Mage Bells get a lot, a lot of strong stuff going on. Hey, more Arcane Keysmiths. Goodbye, Bitter Tide Hydra and MCT. MCT is really good, but yeah, Keysmith is more copies of Explosive Runes, the best card. Now, here's what I mean when I say um, cards of equal quality. This is the, the game giving me three cards that it deems of equal, of, well, you know, like, relative equal quality. Um, and that's about how this is. Like... You know, Fireball versus e Polymorph versus Primordial Glyph. Uh, not an easy one. Uh, Fireball's very straightforward, obviously, but Glyph could be anything. It could even be a Fireball, and that makes me want to pick the Glyph because of the flexibility. Dragon's Fury, Death Speaker. Dragon's Fury is a weird one. And us, in our deck, it would, it, God, it could fail. I don't want to pick it if it could fail. Let's get more Death Speakers going. Uh, these are lowish, but I will take any Bloodfin Raptors for cu Curve. Hey, more Shimmering Tempest, which is also really good for Curve. I love r random mage spells as a generation thing. Uh, let's get some healing going on. More Glyph, Frostbolt, Primordial Glyph. I want to continue on the Glyph train. 
If our deck has more ways to... Okay, Marsh Drake's actually real for us. Because we have ping. Like, we can play this and be reasonably happy with it. It's like a fu Hey! Here it is. The best secret. Shooting Star. Some of Valkyr. Shallow Gravedigger. Shallow Gravedigger gets us more. So Explosive Runes is this secret that, like, in my mind has changed how Mage works. Where you get removal and burn at the same time. Like... Usually, it's you, you have to work at pressuring your opponent's life total while controlling them. What was that one mage legendary in the set that wants nine cards in your hand or something? Yeah, there, there's a couple things like that in here. I'm going to pick the shooting star to see how it plays. Whenever you shuffle a card in your deck... Ooh, but there's a wild pyromancer here, and pyromancer seems real good with us. Yeah, gotta pick the bomber. Steam Surger, or... Hello, 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 hello. How many elementals do we have going on here? An okay amount. We It's mostly the, the Shimmering Tempests. Thing is that Steam Surger is also, like, a strong... I want to play with hello, 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 though. Uh, I think Darkscale Healer is something we don't really have. Wow, these are some... And here we have it, the bottom of the barrel. These are three cards at the bottom of the bottom of the barrel. Let's pick that Sneaky Devil. Okay, you know what? I want to believe. Uh, I cast Arcane Missiles. Fungal Mancer, sure. Fungal Mancer gets things real big. Snap Freeze, Frozen Clone. So Snap Freeze is Shatter, but like playable. Freeze a minion if it's already frozen, destroy it. It's literally just better Shatter. Uh, I'm gonna pick up Frozen Clone. I like that. And then our final pick. Uh, I think Bone Drake finally gets it. That's our top. Of our some of our top end. We already have a Giggling Inventor in our deck, so we're good there. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, make the deck list. You can all place your bets on this one. Uh, I'm going to place my bets at higher than the last one. We have no spell damage, but uh, yeah, it's, it's sad that we don't, but just one of those things where it's like, how much spell damage? We picked every spell damage card we could that we were offered. And that's part of the arena at times, you know, there's, there's, you, you get those roles where it's like, yep, that's, this is, you know, you, you get the arenas where you were not offered mech synergy or things like that. Really interesting to me that they turned off the, uh, the like, new set bonus because the new set bonus was like the thing that made like the new set work in arena a lot of the times uh where you would have especially if it's a pretty synergy based uh thing like magnetic is odd call to turn that off in my mind right. so yeah place your bets how do you think this one's gonna go i feel like we have a little bit of a lack of like top end but we also have a pile of like removal and a lot of card generation spell generation in particular between two glyphs and two tempests and spell generation makes me feel in a very safe position like we don't have any sweepers but we have a lot of cards that could generate sweepers uh is is kind of a, a part of it you know all right does that look right That indeed looks correct. Top end is whatever the random cards say. Yep. So, I do think we should be able to pilot this one to a better start than the previous. Uh, hopefully we can pressure opponents and deal with them a little better than in the last one. Our strength in our last one was really concentrated in those three war paths, which did a lot for us. But the, the cards surrounding it were not nearly as, as uh, effective with them. Alright. Jam! 
Athena versus Uther. I will fight with honor. You ask for it. Keysmith, huh? I'll keep a Keysmith. I disagree with that, though. A one, I, I do, like. I don't. I don't agree with that assessment. Squirrel token. Warpath is incredibly powerful, flexible. A card I'm really happy to have. It was one of the most powerful cards in our deck. Then, I'm happy having more than one. Hey, flame strike. All right. So we get to be kind of slow here, but we have some pretty effective plays to go with it. I've got like the ability to ping down a two drop. If they hero power, we hero power back in kind. Uh, we got cast arcane missiles. Hey, the worst card in our deck. That's nice. That means we can't draw any worse than that. So I cast arcane. That's sort of what it's looking like, isn't it? Out of my jungle. So, our opponent has either, like, Tyrion or, uh... Or, uh, Sunkeeper Tareem, then, at this point. That's generally how that card functions. Let's see if this works. Okay. Works well. But yeah, high, high chance our opponent has something like Tyrion Forgering. Hesitated a good while, so I didn't get anything super great. But the opposite of that could be true, though. He, the, our, the opponent could have hesitated because it was a bunch of great things, right? Like, it's, it's hard to, to make that uh, claim because it could be made either direction. I want a mirror a little later than this. Leave the key. Hi. You don't. It is more likely than they got three bad things and three good things, though. Not necessarily because of the way Discover's weighted within class. It actually has a higher likelihood that that's three in class cards. The sun has and set for me. all right, we used to blast them for five. Welcome to the power of explosive runes. Where our opponent takes infinite damage. It's nice. It's really nice. Okay. Reporting for duty. Okay, I think we're just gonna... Ooh, this actually looks really nice. We'll go ahead and... Drake. And then we get to shooting star there. And redemption on the one. Nice. And, um... We'll see what's in the box. Nothing is in the box. Um... I'm gonna coin to clear their board then. What's the big this minion to throw into explosive runes? A big divine shielder? Yes, because it burns off like so. Say you throw Sunwalker into explosive runes, it tries to hit the, the shield for five, and then obviously fails because it, it can't. Nice removal spell. That's good. Uh, I think this is a mirror image turn or close to it. Our opponent doesn't have a two in hand, so I think it's safe to play something of play our mirror entity now. I say Mirror Image and Mirror Entity kind of interchangeably. To me, they're, they're very similar cards. But yeah, Mirror Entity here seems really good because our opponent could go with something. Okay, Chain Gang. That's a good answer to it. Um, our Sneaky Devil actually does some work here. Alright, um, yeah, Sneaky Devil, beat down, clear that out, make it happen. Ruby Spellstone, needs elementals to upgrade, that's just not happening. So yeah, Sneaky Devil is going to be like a kind of poor, oh, do they actually have Sunkeeper Treatment in hand? 
they're hovering over that hero power, which makes me think they want to go hero power to Reem, but that doesn't do anything here, so I don't think that would be a play you'd want to make. I would absolutely want to do anything else than to Reem right now. Uh, we have some problems in that... Yeah, this is going to be a bit of an issue. We actually don't have a lot of, uh... For duty. Strong, like... Ways to remove our opponent. Okay, let's... No, that's good. So I Pyromancer... I Glyph... Ping this, attack that, that clears. We don't even need to worry about what card we get off Pyromancer, which is even better. <laughs> Luna's Pocket Galaxy, eh? Um, You might think this is a weird choice. Why did I pick the Polymorph? Uh, the, the answer to that is, uh, I'm still scared our opponent literally just has Tyrion Forging to play down. Put this apple on your head. And certainly it's punishable. Certainly our opponent might not have picked Tyrion, but... Like, if we don't... Oh! Okay, so we are, we are on the opposite end of things. That's fine. Yeah, that actually works out pretty well, because this is just a five mana, like, kind of... The, the, the life steal is the most annoying part of it, really. Everything else on that's not really that strong. Are they going to magnetic here? Are they going to buff it? Oh, are you going huge? Go big, go home? Sure, I'll polymorph the hell out of that. <laughs> so they're going to go ahead and gain their eight life. Frozen Clone's going to make up some of the card advantage here. Like, we're going to be... Hopefully, they play something reasonably sized. I like... I think, again, my favorite play into a Frozen Clone was, like, the nude Bone Mare, but that can't happen. You know what? That's great, though. That's really good. We get two of those? A+. plus. I'll take two of those any day. Thank you for the... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess they didn't want to give me two of those. Okay. Yep. A little late to the party, but, you know, I appreciate it nonetheless. Do I want to play Explosive Runes? Put us to 27. That's less likely to be useful at this point. Kind of want to get some Taunt down. Let's get some damage rolling on things. Yeah, our opponent will definitely have other things to EMP. I don't have to worry about that. And we still have a good play here, so... Let's see what they've got. I like our taunt walls. Our life total's just fine. We have a lot of power on the board. I feel like we're in a good position, and we even have like some card draw left over with the Shimmering Tempest. Oh, it's that thing again. I don't like that. I don't like it at all. I don't like that one. All right, well, we get to play a real explosive runes, which I suppose is neat. Um... Yeah, let's go break this open. Oh, 
Okay. A lot of secrets. Is Pocket Galaxy worth it here? No, because we have 10 mana. Like, all this does is make all our minions and our deck cost one, which doesn't really do anything. Like, we already have 10 mana. Everything we draw, we will be able to play. You know? So I'd rather have that be something, like, meaningful to the board. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Thanks. Ooh, that's an annoyance, because these aren't flipped. These need to be flipped. Um... So now this is on big. For the crusade. Sure. More poison. Well, we get to kill that. That'll be okay. Alright, this is bad, but it could be worse. Like, we're in a pretty decent position. Uh, this glyph could really change things, though, if this gets us a sweeper out of the pocket. Polymorph, huh? I think Polymorph does the job here. I wonder. Neither snow nor rain nor wind. No. There's no way to remove all their minions, so we're not going to try. Oh, okay. That's horrifyingly bad as a top deck goes. Because that means they just get to have continuous board presence for the rest of the game here. And my life total is currently 7 instead of 15. What a dreadful, what a dreadful board. This is some awful cards in hand right now. This update is okay, that'll force a mech to be played out of our opponent's hand, so... Okay. Vine Cleaver is a very hard card to come up positive against. Mirror Image plus Fungomancer wasn't a very good play there because they kill half of it with one of their things in hand and they kill the other half of it, like, very easily. Um, okay. Freeze our opponent. And I can't play that flame up. I don't believe that because that removes our, our rotating spell from the lineup. And the moment our rotating spell is out of my hand, if I like two for one myself to for a temporary gain, we have no way of winning the game rather than like low chance of winning the game. I feel like the counter spell, that's, that spell in our hand is one of the ways we still stay in this is that rotating. And if I don't have that rotating anymore, then we're in a really bad position. So, why I, I did that the way I did. Play to win, not play to not lose. Did they have just six damage? Let me show you the arc 
Okay. So if we get a sweeper here, we stay alive because we're at five. So if we get a flame strike off this, we're or a blizzard, we're actually okay. It's weird as hell, but we will stay alive if we get something like that. Oh, hmm. Meteor is not enough. Uh, Meteor's close to enough. It's real close. We can kill... We can go to one off of that play. So I think that means we have to depend on unexpected results to get us something... Spicy? Like a 2-4 a taunt or something like that? Yeah, this won't win us the game, so we have to go with the play that could. Neither of those are taunters. All right. Accept our death. All right. Well played. And that's the power of the vine cleaver. Reporting Very hard to beat late game cards. The the mech that they had uh, as well, the one they discovered off of their Stonehill Defender, was also very powerful for them. Uh, putting them back out of, like, gaining them that much life, put them outside of, like, we did have a couple times where I had a choice at a Pyroblast, and had a, our opponent been at, at uh, you know, 13 instead of 22, like, the math on a lot of the plays uh, changes drastically. Yeah, the trick in New Arena is that basically every deck is strong. There's, like, it, because of the way that the arena's balanced at the moment, it's very hard to come out of an arena without, like, strong cards in your deck. Sure, I don't think I want Mirror Entity in the opening. I like Mecharoo and Shooting Star, though. Shooting Star with Wild Pyromancer is kind of nice. That's a good sweeper. Hey, Keysmith, how you doing? So yeah, we're gonna play that Pyromancer on two, unless something like coins out here that we can just ping off. Um, that's clear. They have to hero power to kill my 1-1, one, one. and if they don't do that, maybe we get a, a nice trade. And if not, I guess you get to play, like, Wild Pyromancer, or even Mirror Image into this board. I don't think I like Mirror Image into this board, though. It's sort of the problem. Mirror Image into this board feels like a really, really poor choice, so I'm gonna play the Pyromancer. Pyromancer doesn't die immediately, and has some good utility with the Shooting Star slash Mirror Entity in hand. Here's their coin 4. Is it a, a Phoenix? That's eh, a Phoenix. Keysmith first, get her runes up. Thought about using the bomber there, but I think the Keysmith is actually better because it keeps our opponent from being able to make forward plays, whereas the bomber is only answering what exists. So here they're going to take three and maybe get a two drop. And if they don't get a two drop off this, yeah, sure. That Okay, sidestep the battle cry on that too. That's fine. Going face, huh? Ooh, now that I think I can punish. Uh, let's, uh... Consult the bomber, please. Bomber looking A+. Plus. I think now's a good time for the Mirror Entity. Our opponent did drop a 2-drop out of their hand, so it's likely they have some higher cost cards. Hopefully we get something that's like a 4-ish. Perfect! Oh, that's nice! Their, their normal attack just turned right off. They don't actually get the trade anymore. Ooh, that's good. Hey, thanks for all the life back. Okay, this looks real nice. Thank you for that. Um, I think we get the Keysmith plus ping. Need a key. 
Uh, let's put a frozen clone. Don't know why they were so aggressive there, because I get to clear them here. I don't want to leave... I, this is the worst mech you could ever leave on the board. Rusty Recycler is the strongest magnetic target, basically, in the game. There's some, maybe, class cards or, or cards that are, are stronger in other circumstances. R the, the Missile Launcher with the Poison Venom, for instance, would be a good example of that. But... Oh my god. I think they're very heavy on magnetic, is what I'm seeing here. That's what this play tells me. I'm gonna get some damage on that. But also, given the lifesteal missile launcher ability is really strong. Yeah, of course, but... So let's see what they've got. Do they have a Warmack for me? Warmack's a good play. Yeah, Warmack's not actually that great here. Because we have the Boombot here. You know, we got Kaboombot. I'd like to get Frozen down next turn if possible. Uh, we got a lot of, like, cleanup crews. Sure, that's fine. Uh... So we play the Marsh Drake, throw down the Shooting Star, boom. We get forward progress on the board, and we get Frozen Clone to give us continuous power. Hopefully, we either get... Again, I'd like to get something good on, like, 4 or 5. I could have pinged off that Murloc, but that's just a Murloc against my board. I feel okay if they end up trading it into the 5-4 like this. Okay, hopefully they play a good 5. Okay, that's what I would call a good 5. I'm actually A-okay with that Frozen Clone target. So let's go ahead and uh, let's check the Raven Caller. I feel icky, huh? Um, I'm not gonna actually give them Voidwalker because I don't want Voidwalker into Shadow Blade. I want Voidwalker into Hero Power. So we're just gonna give them the run of the board with that weapon if they want it. Nothing on the board is singularly powerful enough for that weapon. So, I don't need any of you. That's fair. That's also fair. Nice. Uh, healing up here actually seems real nice. Uh, let's. Uh, can I get this off the board too? I don't know that I can. Maybe that's okay. This ping seems fairly obvious in my mind. Join or die. Alright. So I put out Voidwalker just to eat that attack. It keeps my 4 5 around a little longer. And if they spend some sort of removal to get around it, that's fine too. Um, I didn't want to play the Apple Bomb because it's, it's basically the same as playing this, but like immediately dying on the board. And I don't like that very much. Here, if they run into Voidwalker, I can just run Scarlet in and. Oh! A well placed betrayal. Oh. Well, yep, we're still playing uh, this game, aren't we? Tragic. I said 
ends your struggle. Sure do hate that card. Alright, so now we got a dragon to deal with. I'm glad they didn't go for board clearing there. If they had gone for a little bit more control, I'd be feeling worse. So, unknown dragon. No! <laughs> Oh, shit! <laughs> okay, never suffer a rogue minion to live. I understand. Kill every minion you control for the rest of the game. Yeah, this casts gang up on a friendly minion. Don't care if I could do some better control on your f just hitting you for seven. We can't leave a minion. Oh god, three bone mares. Okay, opponents at 14. We 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 actually are in a pretty decent position. Hopefully they're stuck playing like bone mare for nothing. Interesting! Blade Flurry there is enough to get a little bit done on the board. On a cold, and we get ah, that's actually pretty good here. Get opponents down to three. That's actually pretty good. I like the fact that it's just three to the face there. So they have a problem. That problem is they're dead on board, and they're dead. To okay. So they're dead to my ping a couple times over. I guess that's just what I'm gonna have to rely on is pinging a couple times. Um. So they're going to draw a Bone Mare, attack me for 8, bring me to 15, 14 with the weapon, then next turn attack for another 14 and I'll lose? Let's hope they don't actually have drawn a Bone Mare there, because if they drew a Bone Mare there, we actually lose. Unless we, of course, flip into uh, a... You know, burn spell. Perfect. Thank you, Frostbolt. <laughs> okay. That was a close one, and that's the power of the Bone Mare. Glad we got through it. If they had that Blade Flurry a couple turns earlier, we would have been in a world of hurt. It was a turn where we left ourselves kind of open with a wide one toughness board. What? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When did this happen? <laughs> Why is my opponent Mecha Jaraxxus? <laughs> I've never seen this. This must have been some promotion. Okay. Emerald Reaver is pretty good here. Mind if I roll need? All right, we're going to go ahead and trade, ping, clear the board. Board is ours. Toothy chest. Oh, dear. Okay. Spooky scary. This, is, this thing's scary when it actually isn't an open board. Alright. The sun has set for me. Are they gonna go 50-50? Are they gonna roll the dice? Okay, we just get the kill then. This is actually really easy for us. Like I just do this. That hits that. And boom, we get a shimmering tempest. Alright, good trades.
We took a little bit of damage for it, but we've got uh, Apple Bomb plus Dark Scale here to make it all up. Uh, yeah, I think they should have rolled the dice as well. Letting me have control, full control of that was very... Uh, kind of poor. I don't like, I don't like that very much. Uh, that was an Apple Bomb turn. Kind of not getting through that for a while. This is a strong defender. Means they're going to be able to tap pretty effectively for a turn or two. Ooh, free two drop. Sure, I'll take a free two drop. No, 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 I don't like that. Um, what's in the box? Perfect. Um, and I think we actually want to get some board presence going. I was fine with either outcome of that. Which is why I took the flip. So. They have to attack into the 4 1. Yep, sweet. Good trades. Unless they tap first and maybe find something else. Must destroy. No walls can hold me. That could be dangerous or could be nothing. Or it's gonna be a worm though, right? Like, that's what that's gotta be, is just like, hey, it's a worm. I know how that works. Uh I guess I ignore it. Like, we just go to town and don't Like, I think it's gonna be the 7-7 seven, seven worm that it always is. Oh, it could just be a bone mare straight to play too. Um, let's go big. Mirror Entities might play on the next turn, hopefully. Like Mirror Entity plus a five. My hope is that it flips a Bone Mare into play. Because that would mean one less Bone Mare in my opponent's deck. You gotta trade the 3-2, right? Alright, what do you got? Shit. Alright. Heal 8. That's annoying. A little big. Might be able to sidestep it. You're tapping still? Alright. Interesting. I could go face there, but... Okay. Interesting. What's with the frozen clones? Oh my god. <laughs> How long can this go on indeed? How long can this go on? How long can this go on? <laughs> I... How long? <laughs> Hello, thank you. Oh, we are gonna run house with those. Okay, leave me with something. Okay, I don't like that. Another opponent is just not playing mechs, huh? No spells in hand either is really tragic. Okay. 
can. We're not really up on cards here is the problem. We're about even, and our opponent is a life tap deck. Yeah, I, oh, clearly I just EMP the Draxus, you're right. I've been, that's a misplay. Shadow Flame? Oh my god, my opponent is like, no fear. No fear! Well, let me show you fear. If they can get through my taunt, there we're dead. Can they get through my taunt? The answer is probably yes. Shit! No! Okay, they can get through my taunt in many different ways. And they also did have the worm, as as was expected. <sighs> God, our opponent was... No, there were... So, fireballing our opponent's head to put them at one, there was no real world where I thought that was the right line. Because, like, the... At that point, then that opens up the line of them realizing that they have to kill off one of their doctors. And I don't want them to know that. Jaina versus Nemzi. Let's have some fun. <laughs> you asked for it. There's a lot of times where you can trick yourself into thinking like, oh, this was like in hindsight, I should have done this. Therefore, I should always do this. And that's that's simply not true. Here we have an, an even cooler one. Mecha Jaraxxus, though. Fighting against Luis. Uh, I'm just gonna go aggression, then. Like, hope our opponent taps on two and just run, run them out of town, right? Like... Point three? How bad? That could be a lot worse. Sure. So that's three in, three out. No real loss. Okay, they get the spark. That's a neat piece of removal. I like that one. Alright, here we're gonna try and set up for a very strong fungal mancer play. Hopefully their play is just something like a Yeti. Uh, you know, a four that's good on board, but not like a Phoenix would be the worst play for us here. Okay, that is good stuff for us. We just get to go straight to town. And we even have the shooting star to clean answer the back half. Want to put up the mirror entity next turn? That's my hope. But our opponent is in. We're okay. They've got removal. That's a good place to be. Yo! What a random spell! Oh dear. Uh, that is is strong stuff. All right, let's take our clean answer. Okay, come on. Ex runes up. I'm doing the clear, and then we're just gonna have explosive runes do some some work for us. 
Okay. Four in, four out. Or four and three out. So I'm using this as my answer to sort of big taunt minions if that comes down to it. Bog creeper style things we can deal with. Hellfire to put yourself to two, huh? No way. I know, I know how I pay my bombers. <laughs> All right, two and two, even split. Oh, that EMP has not been showing up well. It's worse than I expected. Though it's, I mean, it's only shown up in one game and would have been good in a couple is sort of the thing about it. So I'm not going to hold that against it that like it showed up late to the Paladin party. Like if it had shown up as the removal spell against their that legend they discovered, hooey, that would have been a lot better. Hammer of Just. The forest fights back. You asked for it. All right, this is a full mulligan. I don't. I could keep unexpected results, but. Okay. Whoa! Yeah. Oh, look at this hand. Mwah. Beautiful. Real good stuff here. Wanna blow something up? <laughs> Even bomber. Wanna blow something up? <laughs> and then we show you how you actually bomber. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's put down the runes. I'm gonna bump that. If I don't, they're gonna hero power attack it anyway, and that's gonna get rid of it, and I don't like that side of things, so... Like, this is gonna happen regardless, and I'd rather have the damage on the three rather than just killing the, the half of that uh, Joey bot. Now, do they play out a minion? The hope is yes. No, they wild growth! Oh, dear. Okay. It's a little more, uh, deadly. I'm gonna coin out this five. Okay, so opponent's gonna be on heavy mana. I should get that mirror entity down around seven or eight. Next turn might be a good time for that. Okay, this is good. So, explosive runes gets us here, and, like, this board doesn't actually do a lot against my four five. So, pretty happy about that. That's a pretty clean Fungal Mancer answer. Fungal Mancer answer. Uh, now let's get some more. I think Mirror's good now. So, I think Mirror would be on a, a 7 to 8 is where I want it. And this is the turn where it fits in best. Okay, not the greatest Mirror, but not the worst Mirror by far. That could be a lot worse. And we can just keep playing Mirrors on the next two turns. If things turn our way, you know? Thanks, skeleton. Alright, so let's go ahead and check it out. Oh, that's also good. We'll play that next round. Uh, we'll put up a counter spell, I guess. We'll do a little bit of cleanup, leave you with no mechs. Don't like that. I wanted a minion answer there, but I couldn't play Vaporize because they can just go face with one of those very easily. Because here's a turn that scares me. Eight is a big turn, but the fact that I made a secret means they might not play their big eight, right? Like, I might be able to stave them off because I made this play, right? So let's hope that functions.
Like, I don't know if I would play a tree into into that into this. They could be bold. If they're bold and brash and living free. Okay, they are not. Good. So we just have Counterspell up and running. Good place to be. All right. I do want to replay a Keysmith. Jeez. Interesting. We might be able to make that work. Oh, we used our Dark Seal here. Maybe not. Yo! <laughs> Damn! Oh, that's a beating and a half. Hoofa. Uh... We must cleanse the Sunwell. Okay. Well, that's good. We do get it to answer the five four. Like vaporize gets rid of that. And I guess we get to just slam down. A lot of friends. So we still have anti spell up. And there's that big and. I'm gonna try and get this thing down. My dragon's so huge. Okay, place your bets. Do you think Counterspell is actually triggering this game? Because I'm uncertain at this point. You think we're way far behind than we actually are, Squirrel Token. Like, things are not nearly that, like, we have lost the game bad. Worried about that legend. Hopefully our shifting scroll can save us. We also have the out of just dealing damage to our opponent if shifting scroll turns into damage. But that wouldn't be unreasonable. Depends on how big our opponent's plays are. Okay, that's fair. Let's just get some damage going. We've got... We actually do need to do something. We will die in the next turn to 9 plus 9 here. So we need something to stop this. Okay. That's not a lot. So 9 plus 9? Is that what we're going here? Okay, we need a, we need a way to stop the board. Uh, preferably, like, Kona Cold? Something like that. Dragon's Fury. Um, oh, it's a three or something? Ugh, that's even worse. Okay, what's their legend? How good? Sure, 4-4. Four, four. That's all you really need is more 4-4s four, here. Okay, pushing me down. I got a 3. Do I have any way out? I ain't gonna do it. Or both. Or both. 
Show me the legend. Come on. You're contractually obligated to show me the legend. You can't attack my face before showing me the legend. You know the rules. Yeah! <laughs> okay. You're still contractually obligated to show me that legend. No! Goodbye, Toki. All right, all right. So uh, we did do better uh, by one. I've learned there's some incredible top end floating around in decks. Like it's it's like both of our decks did not have a a, a long game that a lot of our opponents did. So. I feel like that's my biggest takeaway here, is, is perhaps valuing things at 6-plus a little better. Oh, Dr. Morgan. And some silly combo card that you, you do some dumb infinites with for 10 minutes. Soul Infusion. Alright. Anyway, that is enough for me today, though. I have gotten my pair of arenas in. I know this is pretty quick and maybe not as uh, long as, as you would have hoped, but I think this was a good time. Not all of our arenas are going to be the 12-3, you know, 12-3, and three, the, the impossible dream. Uh, you know, the, 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 the long runs. You, know, you have to balance them out. Anyway, thank you all for joining. If you want to catch more stuff like that, uh, like this, you can always follow, see when I go live, I do this, I do cards, I do odd RPGs. I've been doing La Milana 2 with uh, Rosella on Tuesdays, if you want to catch that. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can always subscribe, you get access to a cool skull. It's pretty neat. Uh, anyway, thank you all for joining. Have a good night, everybody.